now's the time where I get to sit back, relax. Well, actually, I probably won't be relaxing. I'll be uh, having pen in hand and uh, taking copious notes. Um, but this is the time in the evening where I get to introduce our guest speaker. So patiently and quietly waiting in the wings. We've got Dean Menzel. She, her company is Brantham. And uh, her business is uh, all about uh, how do we use that auditory sense in business? So music and sound uh, specifically. And uh, she works with us um, large companies on, on their sort of brand recognition and their sounds and their music. And she works with small businesses as well too. So uh, uh, you may not, uh, you've probably heard a lot about people who deal in the social media sphere and you know, so what to do with Facebook, what to do with LinkedIn, what to do with Instagram, that sort of things. Well, how many of you heard about uh, the, the whole sort of uh, medium of sound and how to use that there? So that's really what we're talking about uh, tonight, or what we're going to be listening to uh, tonight. And I know that uh, Dean has a uh, information-packed uh, evening for us tonight. She's an award-winning uh, music uh, writer and producer as well, too. In fact, she's just been nominated for yet another award as well, too. She's incredibly passionate about what she does. And as I said, she is trying to get... Uh, a good connection into the Olympic Committee. So if you have got your hats on and you do think about someone that uh, might be able to help, drop it into chat or uh, uh, Dean will give you her details later on and you can just uh, drop her a message as well to be great to have her in that committee. Uh, I, for one, want free tickets into some of the games. No, no, uh, I, for one, would like to support Dean to get into that uh, arena as well too. All right, so let's uh, put your hands together and let's uh, welcome to the stage Dean Menzel. Thanks so much, Nick. And um, thank you for this community as well. Somebody's already reached out to me um, about the Olympic Committee. So this is just an amazing community. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. I'll be contacting you tomorrow. Um, so thanks, Nick, uh, for having me on tonight. And welcome. I'm going to call you music lovers uh, because we're talking music today uh, in this presentation. And as Nick mentioned, my name is Dean. I'm just going to pop my, I share my screen with you, by the way. Can everybody see that okay? Okay. Just going to move that over and that over. Beautiful. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm Dean from Brantham and I'm hoping to give you some great content tonight on how you can use music to bring more visibility, connection, engagement, and memorability to your brand. Life is music and music is life. Right, so music is indeed a big part of life. It's been a big part of my life from an early age right through to now and everything in between. I've been everything from a vocal coach to a choir director to part of a band, a songwriter. You can see some pictures there. Um, that's a bit of my journey there. Um, Chris Ellen, who's, in the, um, uh, who's online with us tonight, I'm sure that's your mum in there somewhere and you've been um, also in my choir at some stage. Uh, and now I use my 30 plus years of experience um, and skill in music and business for my agency, Brantham. Um, so with Brantham, people say to me, oh, so you're a music business. And I usually say, well, I don't really view myself as a music business, but rather a brand engagement agency because I like to use music as the tool to bridge the gap, the gap between brands and their target audiences. And I do that in two ways. One is to get brand memorability. Um, so for brands to get memorability with their customers um, through their marketing. And on the other side of brands are their people. So I use music uh, to bring teams together and I do that by turning businesses into bands for a day. Um, so innovation, I, I mean, this is quite a, a bit innovative. I've been told by many people, uh, it's a new way to use music or a different way to use music. There's not many people that do what I do. Um, but innovation and creativity have always been something that I've been drawn to from an early age, um, from, you know, artists in music who've sort of pushed the boundaries, you know, Elvis, Michael Jackson, Madonna, um, you know, right through to, you know, Lady Gaga, you know, so, um, you know, great songwriters and creatives in there as well. And um, other influences which have really inspired me with their stories of how they've sort of pushed the envelope and changed the game 
um, of what's possible and or what's been done before. You've got your Serena's and Coco Chanel, Amelia Earhart. Um, love them or hate them, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, they've changed the game for all of us. And, you know, they're the people that really inspire me to look at music and branding, specifically branding, where it's traditionally very visual. Um, and the same with marketing, where it's traditional, traditionally very SEO and, you know, like email marketing. Um, and, you know, I, I really want to change the way that people do uh, or, or connect with their target audiences and their people. So um, doing something new has its obstacles. And, uh, you know, I've been really lucky and humbled to um, have such support and recognition by the business community um, and the songwriting com community as well for doing something new in this space and very niche. Um, so uh, nationally and internationally, I have won some awards. Um, Nick mentioned that before. Uh, I was in Melbourne, I won some awards in Melbourne. Um, and this bronze uh, Asia Pacific Stevie Awards was for branding entertainment where I branded a conference, oh sorry, an awards uh, breakfast and, um, and, you know, basically did some research to make sure that it was really um, resonating with the target audiences. This is a pitch. Uh, uh, in the middle there, pitch competition that I won um, uh, just for the concept of turning businesses into brands for the day. And that was during uh, COVID uh, that I had used an example of what I did with that. But yeah, again, really humbling to, to just get that recognition. It's very sort of validating as well when you're doing something new. So you've heard about me and music in my life. And before I get into the hows and lots of uh, of what music or how music affects us. I want to just take a little bit of time to find out a bit about each of you. Um, so if you can open the chat, I'd love to know, and excuse my picture there, but this is uh, an album that sort of shaped my childhood, well, not childhood, but my growing up. We had the Ripper albums and all the songs on there. I don't know if you guys remember the Ripper albums, but, um, but I love the music and uh, my painter who's painting my house. Uh, or he's been painting my house uh, in the last week. We, he's had his playlist of all these songs. And I, we just had a chat about um, this album the other day and he remembers it and uh, a lot of people do. Um, they were quite iconic in the day, but I'd love to know what's a song or an album that evokes a memorable moment in your life. Um, if you can pop that in the chat, it will just, yeah, it's just a little bit of a way for me to get to know you guys. Um, I'm just going to open my chat so that I can see if you've got if you've got any songs there. It might be a song from a, like your wedding day, or it might be a song from your childhood, a jingle that you uh, remember, or just even something that reminds you of a person uh, that was in your life a while back. But I know this Ripper album. Um, I remember. I, we had like a, a record player and uh, I put it on and crank it up. My dad would be cooking in the kitchen. Uh, my mum would be somewhere out the back doing laundry some, somewhere. My sister would be, um, you know, out with her friends or whatever it might be. But, but I remember this, I can see the room that, you know, the record player was in, you know, I can hear the crackle on the vinyl um, playing and yeah, like, used to just sort of sing in my hairbrush or whatever it was that I was doing at the time. But, um, but it was just such a great time in my life. Oh, look at that. We've got Pink Floyd, <coughs> Chemical Rabbits. Oh, wow. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Love it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What memory evokes that one? <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, I know. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to uh, confess. Um, oh, Africa by Toto, Die Straits. Oh, look at all these great songs. I feel like just adding them to a play playlist right now. Um, oh, Jennifer, it's okay. Funky Town, I hear you, love. <laughs> I'm sure there's quite a few of us that love Funky Town. Oh, my gosh, you guys are awesome. Beautiful. Well, I hope that's just um, taking you down a little bit of uh, memory lane um, with a bit of music. And... So we might just jump into the next part and just keep moving along. 
Um, so we're talking tonight about how music can connect with people, okay, uh, with brand. But we're all, when you're talking about brands, you're talking about businesses, you're talking about people at the end of the day. And, um, and music is the great connector. It's got such a deep influence on our human emotions, our behaviours. It's got the power to evoke feeling, create mood, and even like alter our physiological response. Uh, Nick, I heard your live this afternoon about, and you were talking about the dog who was salivating every time he heard the bell. Um, he associated that with food, that sound. And that's what music and sound can do, you know, like it can trigger things in us. And by understanding the impact of music and sound on our emotions and our behaviour, you can strategically tap into this knowledge to captivate your audience. And here's a few ways in uh, how you can do that. So brand compatibility, what I mean by that is by choosing music that aligns with your brand identity and your values, um, by creating consistency between your brand and the music you use, it can create a sense of authenticity and it can reinforce your brand's message. For example, if your brand is youthful and energetic, you would probably choose music with a contemporary sound in an upbeat tempo. Um, that's sort of like pretty, pretty obvious. Um, if your brand is um, catered towards uh, like an older demographic, it's probably better to use music that are classics that would resonate with that genre or demographic. So, the next one is emotional response. Now, music has the ability to evoke a wide range of emotions. You know, uh, like we've played songs. Paul, you would know at funerals, there are specific songs that people choose for funerals. There are specific songs that people choose for their bridal dances. And there are specific songs that people choose to work out to at the gym. So you can tap into different elements such as tempo, melody, harmony, lyrics, to draw specific emotional responses. So I mentioned a gym, would you probably, you know, think that more energizing music would be used inside a gym to, um, to motivate people to exercise. And that would be sort of different to say a yoga studio, which might use more chilled out music or more laid back or ambient music. Um, both are in a fitness industry, but they have different audience. Um, and different needs. So consider the emotional experience you want your audience to have and select the music that aligns with those desired emotions. Memorability. So music is closely link linked to our memories. We just proved that in the chat. By the way, I just saw When I Fall in Love by Nat King Cole. I love Lost. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's really so powerful and, and it can bring you right into those moments again. Um, memorability is also about, um, you know, how easily you can recall music. And that's why, like, pop music is so, you know, easy. It's catchy, you know, like, um, like you, you're sort of like thinking, come on, Eileen, you know, like that's why you get people singing in the pubs or people singing along to things, even like, you know, at the football or the rugby, you know, uh, having catchy hooks are really, really key to, um, to having memorability. Um, we all remember as well some jingles from back in the day or some of them were earworms. I don't know if like uh, there were some jingles that you couldn't get out of your head if, if you did. I'd love to know, um, you can let me know in the chat. But with today's attention spans, which have literally, I just uh, used chat GPT to uh, earlier today to find out um, how low our attention spans are these days. And they said 8.25 seconds. That's hardly anything. Um, you know, that's why people are scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. We really don't have time to, you know, to keep people hooked, you know. So, like, if we can get their attention in those first eight seconds with a catchy hook or uh, I think Harry was mentioning um, or somebody else was mentioning just to keep people on a website, you can use music to do that. Um, I've got a client that uses music, um, uh, music that we wrote for her. Uh, she's got it as part of her website and um, she finds that she has more engagement on her website. So, um, so yeah, keep it nice and short and sweet uh, and keep it catchy. The next one is adaptability. Having music that can adapt to multiple content channels is, it's, 
Um, it's very different to say the, the full jingle or the 30 second jingles that we heard back in the day, which were just like, if you heard the jingle, that's what the jingle was. It didn't, you know, like mold to any other platforms. You heard it on the radio or you heard it on the television. Now we've got podcasts, we've got, you know, phone hold messaging, people use training loops and music in their events and all sorts of things. And these muse or these pieces of music or the requirements for these pieces of music, sometimes they have to be a full length song. Sometimes they have to be a short snippet, but the music has to adapt. Sometimes you even need like a soundtrack to your video where you can't hear the singer. So um, having music that can adapt to these content channels, um, this is how your brand will gain that memorability by being heard on as many platforms as possible, um, because that's consistently consistently um, voicing your brand, just as you do with your visual logo. If you've got it on your website and your business cards and your, your apparel, um, you know, you've got it on your social media channels, you've got it on your LinkedIn. Um, it's the same thing with audio. So um, just in terms of that repetition, I, I don't know if anybody remembers uh, an old McDonald's campaign about the Big Mac to, to remember what was in a Big Mac. Um, but 40 years later, and I can guarantee you it's two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. And I didn't have to look that up. So um, it's it's repetition, it's catchiness, um, those kinds of things to really um, have as key items in your, um, in your uh, brand music. Cultural and social context. This is an interesting one. And love to ask when I say to people, who is listening to the music that you use and how are you using it? Um, by understanding the cultural backgrounds, preferences and social trends of your target audience, you can select music that re resonates with their identity and creates a sense of belonging. And a great example of that, I'll just mention quickly, um, I did a give back campaign where um, I brought 24 countries together to sing on a virtual, uh, in a virtual choir. What I did for that was I rewrote Waltzing Matilda. Now, if you know Waltzing Matilda, it's Australia's unofficial national anthem. It's very, very, um, people are very protective of it. And I was a little bit nervous because if you rewrite something like that, it can either um, do well or blow up in your face. So for me to rewrite something like that, and not just for Australia, but for 24 other countries that, you know, aren't Australia, I had to change the message because I had to work with the cultural context. Um, so I changed it and we did it for World for Peace Day, oh, sorry, International Peace Day in 2016, I think it was. And because of that, we had 30,000 views on social media, we had 500 shares, and we had 100% positive engagement over social media. Now that's really um, saying something considering that social media is a, can be a very interesting place when it comes to, um, to audience uh, engagement. So um, I'm just going to keep moving on because I'm um, sort of looking at the time, making sure I'm on time, but storytelling and narrative. So uh, I said on LinkedIn last week that music is the great storyteller and it is. Um, you know, there's such opportunity to, to really tell your brand story or create that emotional bridge that complements your brand story um, or to shine a light on a key theme in your messaging. So using music to help amplify that emotional impact and make your narrative more memorable um, is a way to connect with people. Obviously, when you're writing things for people, it's good to test and get some feedback. Uh, you know, always doing that and, you know, you can do that through focus groups, you can do that through surveys, you can do it uh, obviously on social media, um, but if you do your research first in the writing um, with the right messaging, then um, it should be um, reinforcing your uh, success of what you've done or what you're using. By the way, I just want to make a note at this point that uh, music in brand um, can be anything from stock music, which is out there, uh, which you can get. Uh, the other kind of music is popular music. You can use popular copyrighted music um, and apply for a license to use that music, or you can have your own music written for you. Um, 
or you can write your own. Uh, so there's some different ways that you can do that. What I would uh, advise is that um, music is a powerful tool. It should be used strategically in harmony with your brand identity and values. So by understanding how that can all work, you know, uh, either you can do it yourself or you can get somebody else to um, sort that out for you. So at this point, we're going to do a little quiz. Um, you can do it in the comments. I just don't know whether or not uh, you can just do them one after the other, or you can type it in a document and post it in. I just want to be able to um, see your answers in one comment. So however you feel you can do that. I'd love you to um, take time to, um, to number one to 10, because I've got a little video with 10 brand themes. Now they can be anything from products to TV shows. Um, and I'd love to see how many of those that you can, uh, or you can know which brand or which TV show uh, it relates to. So I'm going to pop that in now. And I'm just going to get going and hopefully you're ready. And at the end of the uh, presentation tonight, I will give you the answers. And um, the first person I suppose that uh, can show that they've popped up the right answers will win a prize. So here we go. So brand names. in the chat your 10 answers um and as i said i will draw a prize at the end show you all the answers so that you can see what they were and um and yeah hopefully we'll have a winner in the meantime i'm going to keep going and i want to talk now about what we're all here for how you can how you can use music to boost your engagement so using music strategically can indeed enhance your online presence, boost a customer engagement and ignite an emotional connection. Here are some additional ways that you can achieve these goals. So use some music in your content marketing. Um, these days, as I mentioned before, many channels include audio, um, like your social media, video, website, podcast, phone hold messaging, radio advertising, and more. When you're doing this, it's um, it's key to choose music that fits with the tone of the message. Oh, sorry. Oh, I sort of heard somebody. I'm just going to No, Dean, I beg your pardon. I got, I'm trying to get rid of a, uh, uh, someone I didn't want to talk to. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, no worries. No worries. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, but uh, TikTok, um, for example, TikTok, um, 
if you're a divorce lawyer, for example, you know, using, say, Taylor Swift breakup songs um, could be a lighthearted way to ensure music doesn't overpower, um, uh, so it could be a way to connect with your target audience. Um, I will always sort of suggest that make sure if you're using music on video that it doesn't overpower dialogue or visuals, but rather complements and amplifies the overall experience. Um, okay. All right. Creating... And that's uh, better without lyrics in that music for that exact same reason. Yes, yes. Using sort of soundtracks um, uh, because it can get quite confusing when you've got people speaking on camera and then you've got people tuning into lyrics um, in the end. So using instrumentals are usually key for that. And I did see your uh, comment above, Paul, about copyrighted music. I've got a, a, a point about this shortly um, because that's something um, that can be, you know, it, it can sort of really sting, especially if you're... Um, you know, uploading content. And I spoke to Nick about it before, just uh, about um, social media muting um, uh, music that you don't have permission to use. So yeah, it can be pretty brutal. Uh, so using things like uh, music that you've paid for um, or music that you've written um, is, is a great way to get around that. Um, leveraging user generated content. Uh, another way you can engage your audience is by encouraging your audience to create and share content related to your brand um, and integrate music into these interactions. So TikTok's very big, Insta Reels are very big. I don't know if you guys use um, these tools at this stage, but even like bringing um, some contests or campaigns where your uh, community can submit videos or TikToks incorporating your chosen music. It um, can help foster community and engagement while amplifying the emotional connection through the shared experience and also stay on brand. Creating themed playlists. Um, this, is, this can be quite fun, especially like if you've got a particular theme going. Uh, for example, if you're a fitness brand, um, getting your community to help you create a playlist for a workout session or even creating a, a workout playlist for your community um, or sharing something for like say mental health day if you're a therapist or a women's empowerment uh, playlist for International Women's Day. Music is a great way um, to create um, to uh, engage your community. And you don't even have to write your own music to do this. You can pretty much just um, get people to just op or create a Spotify playlist and, and use that to uh, energize you or you know, reinforce key themes. Um, <clears throat> and then you share these playlists obviously on your website, your social media or your newsletters. Um, and it can help sort of even bring something a little bit more dynamic to your mail outs as well. Um, Personalise the customer experience. If you've got an online store like Shopify or even a bricks and mortar store um, or an office, tailor the music um, experience. I mean, like, I don't know whether you use music in your spaces, but, um, but there's opportunity to have a playlist going just in the background, especially like if you've got a reception area and, you know, people are coming in and just sort of sitting down rather than having silence. Um, bring some music into there it, um, with a selection of genres or moods that can align with your brand. And it helps enhance the overall experience, boost engagement and create that sense of individuality, individuality and ownership. Um, live streams and virtual events. It's great when, you know, people walk into a virtual event, even an in-person event or whatever it might be, and there's music playing. It just sort of sets the tone. It, um, you know, uh, it, it sort of, um, you know, like goes with the theme that you're doing and it creates that uh, vibrant and immersive atmosphere. Don't just use and pick music as a silence filler. You've got such potential at events to choose music that um, energizes the audience, builds anticipation. And like I said, sets the tone for your event. Um, you can also, Amplify that by using, say, a live chat to um, allow viewers to engage and share their reactions to the music, fostering that sense of community and connection. 
And this is my, look, I'm a little bit biased, but music branding, have your own signature sound, create a new, unique and memorable um, theme song, anthem or jingle that reflects your brand identity and values. Um, incorporate it into your content um, right through from your videos to your podcast to your social media posts. Um, like I said, in your venues, it could be anything right down to I've got mine on my phone ringtone. So anytime that I'm shopping, um, music is life. You heard it at the start. I had it at the start of this presentation. Um, I put it everywhere. So um, it's that recognizable son sonic identity that resonates with your audience. And I don't know if you can see it on my shirt, but music is life is written on my shirt as well. I use the lyrics of my own brand them to be my brand, not just visually, but sonically as well. Now, engagement, as I mentioned with Brantham, is not just about engaging with your customers, it's engaging with your people, your teams. So you can use music to engage your people and ways in which you can do this is to create workplace playlists, um, like a Spotify playlist um, created by the, your team to energize, promote, focus um, and productivity throughout the day and align with your people and values. Um, you can incorporate music into your wellness programs, like a, an in-house choir, off, off, um, office band, I mean, like the police bands, the army bands, and, you know, it's a great opportunity, just especially in stressful environments. Over COVID, we saw like nurses and doctors, you know, do TikToks and all sorts of things. Um, and it was really, really great for stressful situations. Um, uh, these are great to promote um, better mental health, stronger relationships and collaboration. And team anthems, basically to unite and come together for shared purposes. So um, remember always, these are some things uh, to take into consideration when using music, whether it's stock music, whether it's um, copyrighted music or whether it's your own music. Um, copyright laws obviously um, apply to copyrighted music. So it's always good to understand what you can and can't do. You can't just put, um, little um, bits of songs into things that you're going to sell sp specifically or even on um, platforms like social media. It'll be interesting to see what happens with um, the snippets that I use today. I'm usually not very uh, an advocate for, for doing that um, because, um, you know, firstly, the platforms will even mute you. Um, but secondly, uh, as an artist, you know, like we really want those payments to go back to the original artists, the people who wrote the, the songs and by just taking them as our own um, doesn't do that. So it's it's a bit of a legal and ethical thing, um, but licensing and payment of appropriate fees sort of falls under that as well. If you're playing music in your venue that is copyrighted music, you are required to pay a license fee um, for doing that and that helps the um, the artists, the original songwriters get paid as well. Um, competitiveness, no, competitiveness and exclusivity. Um, uh, I remember seeing two brands and they were two well-known brands. Um, it was Squarespace and uh, I can't remember the other one, but there were two brands and they ended up using the Doris Day song of um, Que Sera Sera. And I remember seeing uh, an ad one week uh, on television and it had the, the song behind it. And then two weeks later, I was in the kitchen and the television was on and I heard the song again. I thought, oh, it's the ad for whatever it was that I saw the week before. And it wasn't, it was a different brand. And it was quite confusing to me that they were using the same song um, uh, to a couple of weeks apart. So if you're using other people's music, you're not creating your own, um, just be aware that, um, it doesn't make it exclusive. You can't use it exclusively unless uh, even like copyrighted music, there are other, who can, other people who can license the same song depending on the agreement. Online audio etiquette, uh, I think it was Harry that was talking about websites. Um, I'm a big advocate for not having music come on as soon as you uh, jump on a website. I find it annoying. I know a lot of people do too. The way that I do it is that um, it's clickable and you allow your audience to choose whether they want to listen to it or not. Um, or either that, or 
have it really, really short. And when I say really, really short, I'm talking no longer than five seconds, because if you have something going on that is going over and over and over, over a couple of minutes, you will probably, um, especially if they can't find where to turn it off, they will jump off your site. And that's a turn off rather than turn on. Um, but if you can have something very short and sweet, that's the other option rather than having um, a button for them to select to choose to switch it on. Loading times, just be aware as well that um, if you're putting music on your platforms, use hosting uh, things like YouTube or um, SoundCloud players, audio players. Don't try and host them on your website uh, because they do take up loading time and they, uh, of your website as well. They take up space. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. And the last thing is project deadlines. If you're wanting to launch a, a an audio brand or an audio campaign, um, keep in mind that there are uh, variables, like for example, for copyrighted music, you have to apply to use that music that can take a bit of time. Um, and the other thing too, is that if you want to create your own music, depending on how you choose to go about it, um, that can take a bit of time as well, because it's if you're doing it strategically, then um, you know, it involves research as well. Um, the quickest way is stock music, but then again, you know, it just depends on how competitive and exclusive you want to be. All right, um, just really, really quickly, I'm just going to touch on some success stories just to give you an idea of what I've done with some businesses. Um, these are three different case studies. Um, two Branthams and a, what I call a brand jam, uh, which is the team buildings uh, on the right there. The first one, uh, I'm just going to bring up my, and I've lost my page. Um, okay. All right, so the first one is follow your dreams competition. So um, basically, this is Kylie Drew. I met her um, several years ago and she has had a dance competition based in Victoria. Um, it was her dream to become like Australia's number one dance competition and, um, and take it overseas. But she was sort of starting in Australia, uh, sorry, in Victoria at the time. Um, she was also using Justin Timberlake's music and she was also using um, One Direction. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with those uh, contemporary bands, but that's the music that she was using at her events. And I said to her one day, why don't you have your own? And she said, well, if you can write something that's just as good as one of those, then I'll do it. Um, today, Kylie uh, is, she has expanded all over Australia. She's um, expanded to UK, to um, I think Scotland, Ireland, and also the USA, New Zealand. Um, and this is just a clip here. Uh, in Edinburgh, uh, 500 kids. Um, this is taken in uh, April, this video, and this is them singing her song. dream come true for her to have people singing her song rather than somebody else's song. She uses it on everything from her live streams to her events to her award ceremonies. She's got it on Apple Music and Spotify. Um, and so, uh, and for her, she is Australia's leading dance company. She's achieving her goal and she's taking it further. So um, her success is just going up and up and up. Um, this is Hobson's Bay City Council. Crazy bunch of people, would you believe they're librarians? Um, yeah, dangerous people librarians <laughs> when they get together. But um, this is a share, actually, it was shared about a week ago by Paula Kelly Paul. Um, she's in there, oh, that's her there, uh, a third from the left in the pink scarf. And, um, and they're still talking about this. We did this, uh, oh gosh, years ago, it was a team, uh, brand anthem that we did with them. Um, they had a 40 page strategy that they wanted everybody on the same page. Um, we created a song, got them to actually um, participate and write the key messaging out of the strategy. And we, yeah, we created a song out of it. And the group took ownership to do that. 
and um, got everybody on the same page with a four minute song. So um, that's the power of music with that. Lastly, uh, this is my most recent client, Transport Women Australia. Um, they came to me last year and they said, oh, look, you've done some video work for us. We'd love you to write. We hear that you write music for brands. We want you to write something for us. And I had never written a song for this particular industry. Um, I had to do a crash course of learning about the industry. Um, and just talking to these women, uh, I really understood and appreciated everything uh, behind this particular industry. Um, but I might just play a little bit of it for you, just a little bit, because I know we're short of time. We have a saying in the transport and logistics industry, and that's, live in the dream so i often say that weekly um, and sometimes i use it in a sarcastic term and other times i use it just because i genuinely love the industry most conversations i have with my drivers each week it usually it starts off with how's your day mate live in the dream or they'll say to me how's your day true and, and i'll respond the same and i think that that's a really important saying because at the end of the day that is 12 that's 12's dream we want you to live the dream and whether that be um, as a truck driver or whether that be as another job within the transport and logistics space, um, that's something that we strive for. The sun sets high in the southern sky, my line for a thousand miles, taking me somewhere I've never been. Hammer down, make the diesel burn, underneath the big wheels turn, keeping it moving while the nation sleeps. Heading south with a heavy load Out on the open road Northbound road train coming straight for me Driver, give me a Got your gold made aid Copy that on the radio See you back again in another week Some days old The road is long and the nights are lonely But no matter what the day I hear how you doing mate I say, May, I'm living the dream. I say, May, there ain't no place I'd rather be. From the highway to the skyway, across the outback to the sea. I'm living the dream. May, I'm living the dream. Okay, so that was just a little bit of that. That's the song that um, we've been nominated for um, for the Songwriting Awards and um, and Twelve is using that on everything from their um, live events to um, to their social media. They've got it on Spotify. They've actually renamed their 2024 conference now into the Living the Dream Com conference. It was originally the um, I think the Driving the Difference conference. Um, so it's shaping their brand and. Um, the response from the community from uh, right through, they're so proud they've had it on Australian trucking radio and everything. It's given them pride in their brand, um, but it's also connected them across the four elements of their industry, which is um, which is trucking, marine, aviation and rail, um, which they didn't have before. And not just that, but uh, they had a goal and I always start from the outcome um, of what uh, clients want to achieve and they wanted to um, to get more membership and get more sponsorship, even just double it, uh, their sponsorship, I think they were after at the beginning. They've tripled their sponsorship at the start of this year already and, um, and their membership is already growing as well. So um, they're being seen now as a really big force in this industry and this is part of it. So, um, so yeah, that's just some, some really uh, great examples of what music can do for brand. Um, so for yourself, if you're wanting to craft your own brand sound, I know I talked about spot, uh, stock music and copywriting music before. If you don't want to go down the road, you want to craft your own brand sound. I just thought I'd give you some pointers um, as to what can help you with that, if, whether you want to do it yourself or whether you want to seek um, a consultant to help. Firstly, know what you want to achieve. Um, secondly, understand your brand values. Um, if you're very clear on, on both of those, then that's a really, really great starting point. The third and crucial, know your target market, you know, do some work on understanding your avatar, who you want to um, speak to, and you create, craft your message um, according to that. Um, research the competition. Um, I, I don't always research the competition uh, deeply um, or, or exhaustively because 
if you're wanting to create your own band sound, you're wanting to, in a way, be seen as a leader in your industry because you've got a long-term vision. You're wanting to stand out of the crowd. And, and a lot of the time, the competition will not be doing something like this anyway. Consider the genre, style and mood. Um, that's really understanding your target market and the context. So like what platforms are you going to be using this on? Um, you know, and I always say, uh, know what you're using now and know what you can potentially use. So whether you're not using podcasts at the moment but would like to in the future, whether you're doing YouTube now but you'd like to do more cinema advertising or you're not doing live events at the moment but you see yourself you know, speaking on stage, know where you're wanting to go and the context because the music will have to adapt to that. Also, if you feel like, you know, chat GPT is not enough <laughs> to write you a song, um, you can collaborate with people like myself. Um, you know, I really uh, take pride in everything that I do. Um, I write these songs as if they were my, for my own brand. Um, and uh, there's a lot of strategy that is behind it. It's not just writing a song. So professionals are professionals for a reason. And um, that's why you would collaborate with them. And obviously test and gather feedback always because like marketing is a constant evolution and things change. So that's all that I've got for today. Um, oh, wait, I'm more evaluate and adapt just because uh, if you have to change or tweak anything for whatever, for example, if you wanted to expand into other markets overseas, then um, you can create um, translations of your brand or if you're rebranding just a quick thing um, we did a, a Brantham for a client um, who rebranded and the Brantham didn't change but it was the anchor that actually created consistency in their brand through the rebrand um, because this, the song itself wasn't their brand name so we're up to this now I hope that everybody's got their Oh, we've got a lot of people who've put some answers in. I'm going to go through them. So hopefully I'll have to have a look at the chat. Nick, I don't know if you can help me out by looking at the chat and seeing who's, um, who's won this. But number one from our quiz was McDonald's. Number two was Seinfeld. Number three was Menulog. Number four was Izuzu. Number five was The Muppet Show. Number six was Jeep. Number seven was Toyota. Number eight was Woolies. Number nine, I think everybody who, who uh, answered got that one. Friends. And the last one was Qantas. So Nick, what do you reckon? Do we have, do we have a winner? Awesome. <laughs> I'm just trying to look through them all here at the moment. There are so quite a few have got it. I think, um, why don't we do it this way here? If um, if you just pop down the number that you had, Sally's got the uh, the right idea. She had five of them. Can anyone beat five? So if, uh, so you, you can't make them up now. This is on what you've already posted. <laughs> so um, yes. what do we got? So Sally's got five. Angela got six. Andrew got six of them. Anyone do better than six? Nick rushed and got six there. Yep. I got a measly two. Oh dear. You're just <laughs> gonna have to go back to watching television, I think. Oh, I know, I know. So six in the wrong order. Didn't know to, oh, okay, that didn't mute, take multiple. Mute, yeah. <laughs> we'll still take six, even though it's in the wrong order. So that's all good. It's just as long as you got them all in. Anyone to beat six there? We got three there at six. So that's Angela, Nick, and Jennifer. Anyone beat six? And a close five there with Sally. All right, it looks like we've got three people that uh, have come through with uh, six there. So Angela, Nick, and Jennifer. So um, how do we want to run this one here? We can, um, we can do a wheel of names with it or... Uh, Hmm. Well, I could perhaps maybe... Could, could we get them to sing? So the one that sort of has got the best... <laughs> oh, fantastic. I reckon because they all got... Well, everybody got friends. 
we're going to get give them 10 seconds each of friends <laughs> and i'll have to pick one <laughs> the friends thing so who shall we start with shall we start with uh nick nick there we go that sounds like he, he looks like one that'll uh, really set the tone and set the scene <laughs> On your mark, Nick, the microphone is yours. I think I might pass for the sake of everybody else's ears, to be fair. <laughs> oh, who's got a bit of Dutch courage tonight? <laughs> Here's great. What, what do we got? Angela there. I hear you've got a sensational voice. The theme of friends. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Let's do it. Can you hear me? So no one told you life was going to be this way. Your life's a, your job, your life's a joke. You're going to be okay. Awesome. So no one told you. No. Life would be like this. No, I can't remember. Sorry. Life would be like this. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, Sounds like I'm give you a hand. That was awesome. <laughs> I'll, be there. I'll be there for you. Oh, she's still going. <laughs> Excellent. Did you have someone helping you and behind you with some of the words, a prompter? <laughs> oh my gosh. And who's who's last? Uh, who else was the other one? That would be Nick, Angela, and Jen. Jennifer Lancaster. Jen. Come on, Jen. I hear, hear you have a sensational voice as well. Uh, can I cheat with the lyrics? Because I got a name. You can in. cheat with the lyrics. Okay. Um, so no one told you life was going to be this way. Your job's a joke. You're broke. Your love's do the away. It's like you're always stuck in second gear when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. But Everything. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour i'll be there for you like i've been there before i'll be there for you because you're there for me too all right everyone unmute and join in <laughs> there you go fabulous uh, fantastic i've never heard fantastic. that song <laughs> you've never heard that song paul you've got some homework to do tonight i have never um, watched friends <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I'm I'm the the game the <laughs> Look, I, I think we have a winner. I, I'm going to select Jen for our winner for tonight. So give her a round of applause, everybody, for, for winning and for also for singing. She did great. Thank you, lovely. And uh, Nick Rushton, we're going to give him till next week to uh, refine the uh, song there so he can come back with his rendition of it next week. Yes. And Paul, I think by then you should know it. <laughs> Did you just give us the bird? <laughs> I watch my videos, not commercial ones. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look. Um, I don't know. Do we have time for questions? I know there were some. There might have been one or two in the chat. I can't. Uh, let's have a quick look. Actually, if you did have a question there uh, and uh, it hasn't been answered, why don't you just unmute and ask it of uh, Dean right now? Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, just with the copyright, where like where's the best place to go for the licenses, like? Everybody uses music on Instagram, and I'm just wondering if they are all licensed. Yeah, well, look, um, platforms like TikTok and Insta have, um, or even some apps have inbuilt licenses that oh, you can okay, yep. use music from there. Um, I, uh, it's when you perhaps like maybe import music into there that is copyrighted that's um that's when you might run into trouble but if you're using the music that is already um like you know how you can use use sounds other people's sounds that are already in there uh, or you can use a list of music from on your reel or your TikTok. it's it's usually fine um the other place if you're wanting to use copyrighted music not on those platforms um you should approach a group called apra um and 
APRA AMCOS and they are the Australian body that deal with copyright and they can always, um, if you've got a copyright question, you can always approach them too. Fantastic. Anyone else got a question? I've just been scrolling through all the uh, things there. Azim. Hey, thanks for that presentation. That was awesome. And I, and I love the uh, other thing. I was in advertising research um, oh, many, many years ago. And one of the things I just wanted to, to understand is um, when you're talking about designing your, your brand music or your brand anthem, is there power in basically mimicking the structure of a currently popular song? So, so what do I mean by that? When we were doing that research, and it was funny, we were talking about the McDonald's ad, the McDonald's ad was there, and some of you may be old enough to remember it, but there was a little girl doing hopscotch to the to the two old beef patties uh, thing, and as she did it, it got faster, and the music got faster, and when the music broke into its full song, it was actually exactly the chord structure of Devo's Whip It, which was top of the pops at the time, so you every time you heard Whip It, you subconsciously thought of the McDonald's ad, right? So is there, I mean, I know music's a little bit, quite a bit different and it comes and goes, but there are still these anthems that we all know of and, and people put songs in there. Is, there. is there value in getting someone like yourself, I mean, I'm a muso too, but getting someone to, like yourself to design your anthem around something that will resonate with your brand, that something is already out in the, in the general space, if that makes sense, what I just said. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. And look, um, it's, it's been an interesting area, especially like in these last weeks. I don't know if you guys had heard that Ed Sheeran had been um, uh, sued. He's charged uh, with plagiarism. Yeah. And it was an interesting thing because I think that was going to set a dangerous precedent uh, because there are only a certain amount of chords, you know, and, <laughs> and patterns, chord patterns. And um, whether you like it or not, the some songs are going to sound familiar like i mean i've heard kylie one of kylie's recent songs and i say that's cool in the game yeah down pat chords are the same but she's been able to produce it so like i think um you know it it depends on what you're wanting to do with them how you're wanting the music to connect uh because um like there you can either take like a a perspective of I'm going to use this as a bit of a gimmick um, you know and in that way like you can sort of like strategically shape um, music to make people think of other things you know and that might be part of the selling gimmick that you have um, and then there's the other uh, um, way of looking at it is that I'm using this music to whatever it's going to sound like it's going to resonate with my target audience authentically because I want to use that in the long term. And I usually find that if you create sort of more gimmick, um, gimmick style music, they're more short term and they can be yeah. great for campaigns. I find. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I don't think that you'd get in trouble so much for copyright, but I do, I would say make sure that you register all of the works because um, you know, like you have to show that you have to use those tracks and so forth, or that you've written them, and um, and they're out there, they're registered, and um, and, the sa and just on a second question, um, to two for one deal tonight. Um, on the second question, um, if I'm using a piece of music for uh, an event, right, that clearly is public performance. It has to be licensed too, doesn't? It? Even though it's in a closed room, correct? Yeah, like if you're if you're using music publicly, yeah, uh, and you're especially like uh, whether it's a paid event or or not, um, you're using that in a venue, an external public venue or wherever. Um, it, you're not just listening to it in the privacy of your home, and you know it's 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 a public. You're paid, yeah, people venue. are paid to be in there. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, you have to register it. yeah, and that way, um, uh, and you register that with APRA, and yep. APRA is the Oh, we used to have cafes, so we used to have to register the music that we, we had and thing. And, and I think something that um, Paul said earlier, one of the, the, the rules we had in the cafes was no songs with lyrics. Uh, uh, yeah. it, it, there was always, you know, musical stuff and it was, you know, really great stuff. There was lots of jazz and stuff, but we tried to stay away from anything with lyrics because lyrics is, create so many opinions for people um, when they yeah. hear. Yeah. You know. It's that cultural sort of social thing, isn't it? <laughs> like you know where you 
you know, like people start crying them. because that's a song they played at their wedding yeah. and they broke yeah. up, or the person. It, it, don't worry, it happens. Ele elevator music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks um, for that. That was, that was an awesome yeah. presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, no worries. Glad you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Can no, I just carry on from the Zoom's on comment from there? there. Um, yeah. So that uh, I'll come back to you, Paul. But as yeah. one there, if you're using a Spotify playlist in a public place, is that uh, considered to uh, cover the APRA rules? Uh, because you know, obviously, artists are getting paid through every play. Or is is there still a requirement to uh, register with APRA? I think that you still have to register with APRA because um, Spotify is one platform, and your venue is a different platform mm. because um, digital is different to live. Um, and there's all sorts of licenses and, and fees and so forth, but it's just to make sure that um, uh, they're not astronomical um, to pay, but it's just to make sure that, you know, uh, it, it would be similar if, like, say, um, you know, a performer was performing in your venue like a, a cover band. Hmm. Um, it's basically to protect the people who are writing those original songs that they get um, acknowledged and paid for what they've created. Otherwise, yeah, it's it, it's interesting. But if ever you have any doubt at all, APRA and COS is the best place uh, to go to. They're very helpful. Um, they have offices all over Australia, and you can um, you can ask them. They, and their site is very very helpful as well. Awesome. Sorry, Paul, I, uh, I spoke yeah, over no, the top. No, of that's it. right. I was sort of following on from Azim's um, line of questioning there about, so when a band plays a cover in a pub or in a wherever, are they licensed to play that? Do they have to be licensed to play the, the songs that they cover? Um, it's mostly the, um, it's mostly the venue um, that pays okay. for that. If, if, okay. uh, Say if a um, if an artist is recording song, it's a different kind of license as well, and the artist pays that because they're getting paid for that. Um, so uh, the 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 venue usually has to um, uh, fill in a particular form for APRA. Um, uh, I think performers have to or, because I'm done performances in quite a while. So I, I think that performers do have to um, fill in a performance mm. sheet. Um, and obviously mm -hmm. like with what they're playing, so just so that it's all processed through APRA. APRA deals with all of that, the administration of that, and then um, and then the artists get paid whatever they're gonna get paid for okay. that. Okay, so if they make a new arrangement of it and don't try and copy it down pat, um, is that, give them more leeway because mm, it's a very gray area there's, yeah. there's a lot of gray yeah. in there yeah. because like you know you get some some artists that do like um like song meshes and put two songs together and all sorts of things and it can become a really uh, copyright i think is one of the grayest and messiest laws uh because there's so much um room for interpretation and yeah uh, that, that's yeah. why everyone sues each other over it yeah. so, yeah. um, so what i was crazy. going what i was getting to then if i film that band therefore mm. i'm recording the music but i am recording the band for the band's sake or if someone here if someone else on here uses that band playing that song as a cover and they put it behind their advertising material, how many arms lengths are away from the original music are we? And like for the rest of these people, are they safe to do that? Um, yeah. um, because I film plenty of bands <laughs> and it got, and the, the, um, the promotional uh, video for them goes everywhere um, i've been testing cameras and that and i've had the tv on in the background just as another and mm -hmm. you know, i'm just filming you know practicing live streaming or switching cameras here and the tv's doing something not even pointing the camera at it and when i go and go and play it back on youtube youtube's blocked them out and yeah. that's just because something there was an ad 
playing on TV and it picked the microphone picked it up. You know, I thought, you know. I, I think that the, the, the careful. Yeah, the the core rule I would say would be original artists. Like for example, if you've got original content and the original yeah. artist, um, they will most likely um, either block that or or you have to show that you've paid for that or somehow. Mm -hmm. If you've got like I say a cover band, it's an adaptation of the mm. music. The venue has to pay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, because like they they paying for music to be mm. in their venue mm. um but as a general rule i mean i've seen cover artists who have done their own versions and they've been on facebook and they've been fine um yep. uh, there are certain rules with releasing cover versions on on digital platforms like spotify mm. you can do it it's a, it's not a big cost but like yeah sort of like secondhand filming and so forth um the the main rule is is mm. that if you're filming like the original Mm. with the, the audio of the original artist that's going to land you in a bit of strife or or at least get blocked um but if it's like say an adaptation you might get away with it yeah okay. all right well i think um Thanks, Dean. thank you for that are we that's going over time or are we okay <laughs> that's probably it really so so i know that uh, so doesn't it go to 8 30 like... these days <laughs> i'm not <also laughs> sure yeah, like, like i'm looking at the time and i'm thinking I hope I haven't done one for too long. Dean, the big question. 30 in daylight saving. Yeah. Dean, I was going to say, well, Jen, Jen sang on this, so this has just completed my eye. <laughs> Dean, the big question is, what year is the strap behind you? Oh, this is a virtual, it's oh, a virtual that's background, cool. unfortunately. I was saying to Nick, because I've just, I've moved from Melbourne and I'm here now in Queensland and we're doing a lot oh. of renovations. So. I have absolutely nothing in this room that I, uh, I'll, I've got several months ahead of me to set it up the way that I want. Um, so until then, it's a virtual So I oh, was that your, I was going to say- that We need some background? realism, Dean. I was going to say, <laughs> yes, don't worry. They're all coming. I've got, I've got my, uh, my vocal booth right up here, but- Awesome. Um, <laughs> get until I get set up properly. Awesome, excellent. Well, before okay. anyone sort of uh, brings out their uh, their strats as well, you know, if you show me your strat, I'll show you my strat. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I've got, got mine around like the back you. there. Hit me, with your, hit me with your rhythm stick there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, before this goes any further, I think it's probably time to, uh, to call it an evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so thanks, Dean, for coming along and uh, sharing with us tonight. Let's everyone give uh, Dean a good a round of virtual applause. Uh, really Thank good you. stuff in there tonight. Really interesting as well, too. So I yeah, uh, love that session. And um, a big shout out to uh, Angela and to Jennifer for uh, giving us their rendition of uh, Friends tonight sort of on an uh, impromptu uh, request there. So, uh, and uh, Jennifer, we will hook you up with uh, Dean tomorrow as well. And then uh, you can sort of catch up for the prize as well too. Um, for those of you that want to watch this again, it will be up on uh, YouTube tomorrow. So let's see what YouTube does with some of those uh, brand music as well. Um, if those, yeah, if those brands are sensible, if they're sensible, they would leave it all in there because it's all about recognition and brand recognition anyway um and uh, i'm not sure sort of uh, whether anyone is on facebook there if you're on there whether you got to hear the music or whether you just had these uh, silent pauses on the uh, way through I'm, i suspect you did get to hear it but we'll see what facebook does with it uh, as well too um but yes it will be up on youtube tomorrow and um if you do want to get in contact with dean as well too just jump over to her website which is brantham.com.au. And of course, you'll find her on LinkedIn uh, as well, too. And I think you're on Facebook as well, aren't you? I'm everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. So, so just Google her name, you'll find it, and uh, you can connect with her there. But once again, thank you, Dean, for uh, coming along tonight. And, um, uh, and for Azim, we will have you next week. 
Um, we had a sort of a false start thinking it might be this week. So it's oh. going to be next week for, for you. So uh, get the team there to actually sort of uh, kick off the advertising for uh, uh, from tomorrow onwards. So for those of you that want to catch up with uh, uh, Azim next week, if, if you remember the, the session that he did uh, earlier on, fantastic session there about uh, business as well. He's going to be uh, sort of uh, talking about what are you talking about next week, Azim? I'm talking about figuring out what the, the exact problem is in your business that you need to fix, and it may not be what you think it is. So anyone coming, be prepared to do some work. Awesome. Excellent. You won't be singing, but uh, there will be some other work. And, here, <laughs> and here's the challenge for you uh, next week, Azim. We want to hear, see that uh, strat come out and for you to sing your brand them. Fantastic. <laughs> Love it. Excellent. All right, everyone, we'll go and have a sensational evening and uh, thank you for coming on and we'll catch you back next week. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Nick.